Today's video is sponsored by the new Paperlike 2.0, which makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris, and welcome to the first of several videos, probably, of kind of an in-between place where I'm out of my old studio, not quite into the new space. What I wanna do today is talk about the iPad Pro versus the MacBook Pro in a totally different way. So basically, instead of comparing each device feature by feature, what I wanna do that's a little bit different is compare each device task by task. So really, this should end up being more about what it's like to work with each device versus how the hardware features actually compare. So what I've done for this video is kind of break things up into four sections and I'll have the timestamps down in the description so you can kind of skip around to whatever's most interesting. So just so you know, the two devices that I'm specifically talking about in today's video are the maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro versus the maxed out 12.9 inch iPad Pro. All right, so we're gonna get started with the basic, boring, just general computer stuff, but it's the stuff that you gotta do on either device. And let's just talk about web browsing first. Now, I feel like the basic web browsing experience is really basically the same on both devices. That's because the iPad Pro now has enhanced desktop class like Safari. But here's the thing, and this is where the distinction really comes in for me. On the Mac, you have the ability to use plugins and really enhance your browser of choice. Safari does have some plugins, but Chrome, for sure, Chromium browsers have tons and tons of plugins, and I rely on a lot of those. So I'm gonna have to say web browsing is better on the Mac. So what about just finding files and working with folders and organizing stuff? It comes down to Finder on the Mac or the Files app on the iPad Pro. And honestly, they're both very usable. The thing is, once again, I think on the Mac, things are a little bit more powerful, a little more customizable. For instance, I really like being able to use tabs in one Finder window, that's great. But it seems like Files on the iPad is getting better every year. Like we now have all those quick actions, but the Files app is just still lacking a few basic things that power users are gonna need. So for instance, if you're transferring a huge, ginormous file from an external drive to a folder on your iPad Pro, you have no indication of how long that's gonna take. And so I think the power users out there are still definitely gonna prefer the file handling on a Mac. All right, what about just multitasking? That's a big thing. Whatever you're working on, you may need to do two things or more at once. Well. I love multitasking on my super ultra wide monitor, using magnet for window management on the Mac. Obviously the Mac can just do more when it comes to multitasking, it's kind of unlimited. But multitasking on the iPad Pro is getting better all the time, especially now that we have cursor support, trackpad support, mouse support in iPadOS, particularly with slide over. Slide over used to be kind of slow and clunky for me. Now with the trackpad or with the mouse, it's a lot faster. And I also feel like with gesture support on iPadOS, I can get into and out of apps super fast. All right, what about widgets? Well, I'll just say this. I actually use widgets on the iPad Pro with that new home screen redesign that we got recently, and I don't ever really dip into the widgets on the Mac ever. So I think that's all we need to say. All right, let's move into the next section, which is basically just light business computing, you know, light business tasks. And let's start with video conferencing. So whether it's FaceTime or Zoom or Skype or anything else, here's the deal. I prefer having the best resolution I can on device. And the Mac, we say this all the time, kind of has that potato camera still. And the iPad Pro has a better camera with better resolution right out of the box. So if you don't want to do something like hook up an iPhone or buy a 4K Logitech webcam to enhance things, then the iPad is better and simpler right out of the box. Also, I gotta give a shout out to the iPad Pro's Magic Keyboard because it's the perfect stand for FaceTiming, for video conferencing, because the angles can be dialed in just right. All right, what about PDFs? That's something that businesses and students even deal with all the time, whether you're on a Mac or an iPad. And here's the thing, the Apple Pencil is a huge asset when it comes to PDFs. It lets you do things like highlight stuff, really easily mark things up really easily, and of course, sign things really easily. So you can do some powerful PDF stuff on the Mac, but I'm gonna have to give PDF editing on the iPad Pro my endorsement because you can just do more easier and faster with the Apple Pencil. Email, this one's really a toss up. You get the same great selection of email apps, whether you're on a browser or whether you're actually downloading a dedicated app 
on either platform. And here's the thing. I just got sick of using a great email app and then having somebody buy it and shut it down. The last one was Astro, it's been a while now. So I'm just back to Gmail in the browser. And honestly, the Gmail browser experience on the iPad Pro is better than the Gmail app. So email, I don't feel like either one really wins. The calendar experience is very similar whether you're on a Mac or an iPad. Let's just take something like Fantastical. It's a popular and kind of pricey, right? Professional calendar app that you can get on both. I like it better on the iPad Pro, I'm just saying. Setting up Fantastical on a Mac is actually a huge pain for how much it costs. And it's just way easier on the iPad Pro. So at least there's that. Well, what about just research? That's something that people do all the time, whether it's for personal stuff, you're researching something to buy, or for your business, or for school. And here's the thing, on the Mac, I love being able to have a zillion different windows open uh, and use hot corners to kind of switch between things or if I have an external display to have you know six different windows open at once, that's not something you can do on the iPad Pro. So that is great, but on the iPad Pro side, I definitely prefer you know highlighting stuff and it, like for Instapaper is kind of the thing that I use for this and making notes on those highlights, exporting all those highlights and just being able to use the Apple Pencil for that on the iPad Pro, it's just, my favorite. So I guess it really depends on your research style and what you do. All right, so let's move on to the next section, which is kind of more heavy duty creative tasks. And so let's start with design. I actually have a background in graphic design. I don't know if everybody knew that. And to be honest, I sort of gravitate to the Mac still when it comes to design stuff, because it's more about muscle memory for me. But Affinity Photo and Designer on the iPad, they're great. And I don't think there's a right or wrong here. It's just whichever one you are most familiar with. And you can become more familiar with the way either of those works just by putting in the hours. Now, for heavy duty photo editing, I'm talking about like a professional workflow, maybe in Lightroom, or if you need to do some editing in Photoshop, I also still kind of gravitate towards the Mac, but I do think mostly that does come down to muscle memory again, although it could have to do with just hardware and raw power, depending on your workflow. But I will just say, I love editing in Lightroom and Darkroom. Kind of funny, I just realized those two app names on the iPad Pro it, with the Apple Pencil, tweaking all the knobs and the buttons and being able to use the Apple Pencil to do touch-ups. I just like photo editing probably better on the iPad Pro, even though I think I can do it faster, maybe still on the Mac. All right, so what about video editing? Uh, I definitely respect what LumaFusion can do on the iPad Pro. It's still just missing a couple features that I personally rely on. I feel like I say this every video, but optical flow, stabilization, but it's making improvements all the time, and I love that I can start something there and then export that XML, finish it over in Final Cut Pro on the Mac. That whole process, and it's not just muscle memory, goes faster for me in Final Cut Pro on the Mac right now. Plus you get the plugins and stuff too, so I'd say it's still more powerful, a little bit faster on the Mac. All right, what about writing? If you're a writer and you're gonna do like a novel, like what would be the best situation for you? Well, now that both these devices technically have a magic keyboard that you can use, it's a great typing experience on both. And to be honest, I'm using the same app on either. It's IA Writer, it's my personal favorite right now if I'm gonna be writing something. And it's a very similar experience on each. I will say, it's easier for me to grab the iPad and take it somewhere and start writing, whether that's on my lap with the Magic Keyboard or at the desk or down on the counter or if I'm taking it to the coffee shop or into a meeting. It's just faster and easier to grab the iPad Pro. So if that makes a difference, then there you go. And of course, if you're a big touchscreen user, then there's that too. If you like the suggestions that the touch bar makes, then you don't get that on the iPad Pro. All right, so what about note-taking? That's a core functionality, whoever you are, and whatever device you have, you're gonna have to take some notes. Well, if it's just type notes, like Apple Notes or Bear, for instance, that is very similar on both devices. But the iPad Pro has an obvious advantage when it comes to handwriting stuff. You just can't do that on the Mac. It doesn't have a touch screen, it doesn't have a stylus. So really, just by default, the notes category has to go to the iPad Pro because you can just do more but I will say it just depends on the app too because something like Notion, which is kind of a popular way to create your own personal or business wikis or databases, it's not really your traditional note-taking app, but that is better, I think, still on the Mac than the iPad. All right, Keynote, that's something that a lot of people use. I still prefer Keynote on the Mac for some reason. It just feels a little bit more powerful, a little bit more intuitive, and this is one place where the simplicity of the iPad and iPad apps doesn't work in my favor. I feel like I can do more, more powerful actions faster and 
better, quicker on the Mac still in Keynote. All right, so let's transition into our last category. I'm just trying to be really broad here. I know I can't hit everything, but hopefully this is kind of a useful survey of the landscape. But let's move into entertainment stuff and let's start with music. Now, when it comes to music, it's really just gonna depend on your setup. For instance, when I'm connecting my AirPods, it's a lot faster for me to connect them to my iPad Pro using the shortcut in my widget on my home screen on my iPad Pro although it doesn't take too long on the Mac either. But then again, that touch bar is actually very useful when it comes to music stuff on the Mac. It's nice to be able to skip songs or, or just tap and drag for the volume up and down and not have to go into the notification center if you're using the Magic Keyboard, which doesn't have a row of function keys. Of course, you could get a keyboard for the iPad Pro that has function keys. But then there's the speakers. The speakers on the iPad Pro are great. I've really been enjoying watching some Hulu and Netflix and YouTube, even with the whole family. But you just can't beat the speakers on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Those are amazing. Uh, what about gaming, and specifically Apple Arcade? Well, I'm gonna say that while gaming and Apple Arcade are great on all kinds of devices, even the Apple TV, I prefer Apple Arcade on the Mac, I think, because at least you get a uniform set of controls. There is no touch screen, so everything has to work with the keyboard, and I kinda like that, because sometimes on the iPad Pro, it's touch screen or it's not, and it's just kinda weird, so I think Mac. All right, this is the last thing I'm gonna to touch on today, but that's reading. So whether it's an article or news or even a book, I think this is obvious, but I would prefer an iPad any day over reading on the Mac. If you own an iPad or you're looking to get one soon, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, now in the second version, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound more like you're using real paper when you're working with an Apple Pencil. One of my favorite things about the new Paperlike is that it's much clearer to watch movies or view content through it when you're not writing or drawing. Paperlike actually gives you more control with your Apple Pencil thanks to that paper-like resistance that it offers. And yes, it really makes a difference. Plus, it reduces glare and fingerprints, which who doesn't want that? Paperlike's great for anyone who wants to use apps like Apple Notes or Notability or Procreate or Affinity Photo, among many others. When you place an order, you're gonna get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories, along with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can place a Paperlike 2.0 order using the link down in the description. All right, so that's it for this video. And yes, it is weird. I'm looking out at a foreign basement here that I've set up my Porta Studio in. So yeah. I guess it doesn't look too different for you right here. I got my desk over here with the plants all over it and that's a little different. That's gonna be the B-roll station for the next several videos. But hopefully you guys don't mind. Thanks for sticking it out with me while we're getting reset up. And let me know if you have any questions that I can answer in the next couple days between these two devices. Or I'm sure someone from the community can kick in some answers too. Don't forget, you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. I'll link that up down below. Also, please join us for the Daily Tech After Party. That's the podcast. Comes out most Fridays, almost every Friday. And of course, if you're not familiar with AppleHype.com yet, that's something you should check out too because every Monday through Friday, I curate a list of three things that you need to be aware of in the Apple ecosystem, including an app, an accessory, and one news item. It'll take you 15 seconds or less to scan. All right, that's it for this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.